Does that mean if you figure out the design, you can cheat death? Alex, you've already done that by walking off the plane. Your friend's departure shows that death has a new design for all of you. Now you have to figure out how and when it's coming back at you. <laughs> I got a question about this guy. Is it by design that he's acting so creepy and sinister? Or do you think like he's putting on an act and as soon as they leave the room, he's like, oh, those guys. <laughs> he's like a really funny, funny, jovial guy. If you're going to break into my funeral parlor, I'm going to try to scare the crap out of you too. You know, it's it's just part of, part of what you do yeah. if someone breaks into your funeral parlor, especially when they see a dead body of their best friend on the table there. Yeah. I mean, this guy's been working on dead bodies for probably decades. I mean, if he if this is how this guy really is, like, how, how come the cuffs haven't been slapped on him long ago? Because <laughs> I'm, he's got to be suspect number one to multiple cases just just by police interviews alone. Yeah, th those those bumbling FBI agents are too busy looking for Devin Sawa as he's yeah. bumbling around his own crime scenes. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. This is episode 107 of the Last Row Podcast. If you're new to the show and you're looking for our website, it's thelastrowpodcast.com. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Spotify. Head out to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser. Leave us a five-star review if you're enjoying the show. That way we're back. 107. Oops. Somehow we made it. Unfortunately, <laughs> we we're back. It's our final destination. <laughs> this could be it. This could be our last episode. <laughs> well, you know. They named the show, they named the episode Final Destination, the movie, and then they had like six more of them. So yeah, finals, it's, it's, finals never final. The Final Destination yeah. number four, what the, they're going to make a fifth one though. Yeah. So uh, March 17th, 2000, Drew, the year 2000. Did you see this movie in the theater? I did not see this movie you in the theater. Not. Did you? you? Must, must not be a big movie guy. Of course, <laughs> I, of course I did. Of course I did. Did you see it in the theater or did you see it on... on after you rented it. Pretty sure I saw the theater. It was right up my alley. Right yeah. up my alley. Uh, with a runtime of one hour and 38 minutes, which is Too high. Too just high. right. Too high? What do you want it? What do you, what do you, what do you want this? To be uh, a short? They get, they get, I have some thoughts. We'll, we'll get to that. Well, some would say it should be longer, you know. I, so I it agree. Make, so it would make more sense. It could, it could be either, it's either too high or it's too low. It's yeah. not just right to me. <laughs> James Wong directed this movie. Drew, do you know what movies James Wong did besides Final Destination? Final Destination 2? <laughs> <laughs> no. Final Destination 3. <laughs> I don't know what else he did. So he did the one with Jackie Chan, and then Ooh. he did Final Destination 3, and then he did Dragon Ball Evolution, which is a thing, maybe. Ah. And then he was done. He made a couple episodes of TV, and he was finished. <laughs> so. Gets a dialogue back up for the finalist of Destinations. Yeah. He's turned himself into a TV producer. He was out of the movie biz. This pretty much ruined his movie business career. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I James can Wong. understand why. Yeah. And uh, and to be clear, because I have such a stuffy nose and it's freaking 7 a.m., you know, I'm <laughs> saying James Wong with a G. With a G. James Wong is much more uh, famous and, and uh, well regarded than James Wong. Yes. Not to so, not to dump on this guy's life. I mean, no, he made a no, movie I just wanna, here. I just want to make sure that people know that my stuffy nose could like you know. Get it's in the it's way peak. It's peak allergy pronunci pronunciation. Yeah, for for all of those listening that are not in in eastern Pennsylvania, it is peak allergy season in the United States right now. And and Bowie and I are both down for the count with this. Yeah. So excuse the stuffiness. It's IMDb six point seven out of ten. Too high. Yeah, that's about right. Too high. Rotten Tomato 35 percent. Too low. Uh, it's like fine. Uh, <laughs> it's a little wait, too low. Why do I think that? Okay, never mind. <laughs> IMDb was too hot. It was too high. But like this is too low. I don't know. Uh -oh. I don't know what I want from this movie because I like what it. Do you want? I like this movie, but like, was it good? No. No. Which is why the letterbox is three point one, which makes no sense. It's it's, it's too, too high. high. Too high. Too, too high. high. And of it's, course, Metacritic thirty six percent, which is sure. I guess it's too low. I think this should be in like the 40s. This is such a confusing movie. So it is. A, so a lot like our last movie, um, which was, Drew, because I can't think of Johnny it. Johnny Mnemonic. Right. Johnny Mnemonic. The greatest go. cyberpunk yeah. movie ever created to man. It's like there's there's probably a good movie in there somewhere. It just got lost in the writer's room. 
I have a lot of thoughts on this that we'll get to and, when we get to the And this is the same way, only this movie is a little more enjoyable to me just because it's a horror movie and there's no thought required and it's just, okay, death's out to get him. I'll, I'll follow you on that. Let's do it. Alex Browning is embarking <laughs> on a trip to Paris. Alex experiences a premonition. He sees the plane explode moments after leaving the ground. Alex insists that everyone get off the plane and seven people including Alex, are forced to disembark. I think it's fair to specify that these are not just people. These are his classmates. His students. Yeah, it's a student yeah. trip to Paris. Correct. So he knows all of these people on this plane. They're not strangers. All watch as the plane actually explodes in a fireball. He and the other survivors have briefly cheated death, but will not be able to evade their fate very long. One by one, these fugitives from fate fall victim to the grim reaper rated <laughs> r <laughs> i mean they had they had a picture of of a naked woman in a penthouse so they gotta ra- they gotta earn the rated r you, you gotta, gotta earn it you gotta have that in there you gotta earn it you gotta have that in there i have a question for you and, and I, i'm not even gonna wait till we get to later but you mentioned that it was just the students that were part of this seven that that left the left the plane the if you're seven. sitting there next to one of those guys and you hear this kid freaking out that the plane's gonna explode are you getting up and getting off or are you sitting you saying this kid's crazy i'm probably oh that's you know i, I like to think that i'm not a, a a persuaded person yeah that i would like to call the kid out as 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 bullshit you want to die but, on your own <laughs> but i'm not the like you know i'm calm during planes but like i could probably be talked into getting off the plane if it uh, if there's enough commotion going on yeah it was very quick. Yeah. We can get into it in a bit, but I, do, I, I definitely want to talk about that. Do you think that the if you argue hard enough, you'd get your money back because you willingly left the plane because there was a lunatic saying there's something wrong with the plane? Isn't that a good argument to get your money back to like get on another flight? Hey, man, those airlines are penny pinching right now. They're they not are. Give you anything back? They are, I, but like it's a good know, argument. We're talking about a plane exploding. It's like I don't feel safe. Yeah, that's true. It's you like, know? hey, there's mechanical failures here, yeah. mechanical problems. What did this kid do? Where was this kid an hour ago? Do we have eyes on him? Was he on the plane? Was he under the plane? What's he doing? I, I think you have a good you have a good argument there yeah. as a potential refund. Yeah. But, but me, I'm going to need somebody to do it for me. Me myself, I'm not a good arguer. Yeah. I would not be able to <laughs> to articulate my problem. You get get your lawyer out there. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to hit you up with a lot of taglines. So we'll go rapid fire through these because there's a lot, but they're they're all pretty good in my opinion. Now, I don't know which ones you've seen ahead of time or not, but just give me your yay or nay on these as, as okay. we go through. Rapid all right? fire. All right, ready? Number one, final destination. Most people have dreams. For Alex, this is real. Eh. 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 Face your deepest fears, dot, 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 before they face you. What does that even mean? I don't really get it. I kind of like, like it though. They, fa- they I, face I, you. I kind of like it, but yeah. like I don't. It's not I don't bad. Think it makes, I don't think it makes sense, but I like it. You know, th- this one would make Vigo the Carpathian proud. But death is the final destination. Boarding starts now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Death is but a, the death is, is but, but a window. Doorway. Time is but a time is but a doorway. Death is but a window. I'll be back. All right. <laughs> a film that decapitates Scream Three. Now, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> that's that's some fighting words there. I agree. <laughs> that it did decapitate Scream 3. They, they came after him. And, and as you'll hear in the awards, they lost every award possible to Scream 3, which is maybe just name alone. But That's anyway. just name recognition, Scream, award, whatever. There you go. Final destination. No accidents, no coincidences, no escapes. You can't cheat death. Too long. Too long. Too long. Too long. <laughs> death- I, it's got to be three things. No, yeah. no accidents, no consequences, no that's escapes. That's four. That's like, yeah. That's, it went too stop many. Stop there. They, you know, they went too far. <laughs> Death doesn't take no for an answer. I like it. That's pretty good. I like it. Death is coming. That's it. I'll see you soon. Okay. <laughs> Next stop it's you. <laughs> Next stop it's you. <laughs> Put it on the DVD. Next stop it's you. I like it. <laughs> you know, they, I'll see they, you soon. <laughs> you you said that you said that there should be threes, right? Those were three yeah. separates. Those should have been on one. It should yeah, have said put death them is coming. Combine period. Them. I'll see you soon. Period. Yeah. Next stop, it's you. Yeah. But they were separates. You know, like if you go to a movie theater, sometimes there's a big movie that has yes. like three posters. Yeah. And it's like there's one the one says death is coming. Yeah. Then the second one says, I'll see you soon. That's what it the should be. The third been. one, next stop, it's you. It's like, oh shit. This nation seems like a banger. <laughs> next stop, it's you is pretty yeah. good. And then the last one. <laughs> it's pretty tough. It's 
It's pretty tough saying. <laughs> I'm imagining like the like the, the movie the movie like director is like writing that to you. Yeah. Uh the, the last one's pretty good. Are you ready to match wits with the Grim Weeper? Re- Grim Reaper. Man, I can't yeah. speak. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm going with next stop, it's you. That's the best one. <laughs> I'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, financials. $23 million budget, probably on all those CGI effects. Too much. And they they gained a, a whopping 112 back. Give, give the people what they want, man. They want to see the deaths. They want to see them. You know, I, I definitely want to see some that were in this movie, but that that's a pretty good return. So, like, so. I, I haven't seen this movie in a long time, and I felt that the deaths were a little tame compared to what I remembered, but I think that's just because I have more memories of the sequel's yeah. deaths, which became much more elaborate. So I have a confession to make to you, it's it's after midnight, so we can we can say Whoa. whatever the hell we want right Whoa. now. So, you know, this is adults only here. But <laughs> I have never actually seen this first one. I saw the wow. second one with you and our friend Julio, I believe. I think it was the second one. But yeah. I've never actually seen this movie. So this is the first time I was watching it. You know, it's it. funny. Usually I'd, I'd ridicule you for watching a sequel before you watch yeah. the first. But it's like this one, it doesn't matter. I mean, deaths after somebody. Let's go. Let's go. I'm not really like a horror buff, so or a thriller buff. I'll watch like we always talk about right on the show. Like I watch it with you. I watch it when we live with our friend Julio. Like I'll watch them when they're on, but I'm never really like, hey, let me turn on Final Destination. And like, it was enjoyable, but I don't know. It just it was it was what it was, right? But I remember the second one, and you're right. Like the deaths, they ratcheted it up. It's a sequel. You got to go bigger. You got to go harder. And you're right, it was tame. But, but like, uh, as, as they went more hardcore, they also went, like, they, they pushed the boundaries of their budget with, for the yeah. CGI. And you know how that 2002 CGI came yes. through. Exactly. It does not hold up well. And, and these these were okay. Like, the deaths didn't look that ridiculous. Yeah, they were more practical, I felt. This, the, like, the less is more kind of thing. Especially when they had, like, actual blood splur- splattering and stuff like that yeah. versus, like, like you said, the mid two thousands when it's people getting decapitated, but it looks like a video game. It's really bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, and so, so it's and I it's just, I especially remember three and four having some of the worst looking CGI. Yeah. Where where they're like, ah, eh, screw it, who cares? Let's slap it on there. It's good, good enough. Even even you said like the CGI of this movie, but I I remember texting you when we were watching this. Like the movie itself, just I don't know. It had a it had a look about it. Like it had a, it looked like it was in 2000. It had a glow yeah. to it or a bloom, you know? And it just, it, it looked like 2000. And I, I'm on record of saying this, like this movie looked more dated to me than like Johnny Mnemonic, which makes no sense at all. <laughs> like it doesn't make any sense. Like some of these 90s movies don't look as dated to me as something like this. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just because of that weird time that it is. Like 90s looks vintage now and it comes back. But this looks very dated to me. And, and you know what's also funny is like there's like there's almost no technology in this movie, like at true. all. No cell phones, like, nothing. No cell phones. There's one shot of a computer that had a big CRT screen, which could have been either in 2000 or 1984. Yeah. For all we know. Like either or. Other than that, there's like there's no other like proof that it's at any one point in time. That's true. Because he was reading the newspaper on the TV or on the the uh, CRT screen yeah. is what he was doing. But yeah. other than that, you're right. And then the one with that that leaked on the on the the teacher yeah. as we'll get to in a second. But no, you're right. It's a good call out. Um so we you, in the taglines we talked they they came hard at at screen 3 and it's kind of interesting without going into all the details. This thing won a couple awards or actually yeah, won a couple. So it won a Saturn award for Devin Sawa and best horror film. But Devin Sawa won best performance by a younger actor. And then it was nominated for a Blockbuster Entertainment Award. Well, I mean, I, mean, I, I handed that one out. <laughs> exactly, so but there. It, they didn't win. I, I yeah. don't. I think actually, who won for that was Scream Three. So Oof. favorite actress, Ali Larder, Internet only. I don't understand what that means. But then favorite actress, Devin Sawa, and I think they they lost to Nev Campbell and I want to say David Arquette or something. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other stuff. It's not fair. But, there's, they're professional actors. Like, is Devin Sawa good at this movie? Not really, but he is. Uh, I don't know. I couldn't tell if he was good or not. He, he was good enough. Put it that way. Like I, there's a, there's a, a, a maybe it's a, maybe I'll say it now. But originally they were talking about casting Toby Maguire and Kirsten Dunst right, in I, the yeah. Alex um, and Clear roles, and I think they're better actors and actresses. But I feel like the movie would have been completely different if they were in that. Don't you think? And also maybe maybe 
up that budget that they didn't want to do. So exactly, they had to yeah. pay for it. And then, yeah. and then he won a young, or Ali Larder won a Young Hollywood Artist Award for Breakthrough for fem- Female Performance or something. But you know, we talked about the filmmaking of this movie, and just something felt off about this thing. And and yeah. you said it in the beginning when I said it was it was too long. It's either too long or it's too short. It's not just right to me because it's either got too much like dangling plot threads that made no sense or not enough that it made no sense. And there's a couple pieces that I saw on IMDb which said that the beach scene that they had on Jones Beach, there was supposed to be more romantic subplot between Alex and Clear. Not yeah. Claire, Clear. Clear. <laughs> Clear. But by cutting that, it made it just felt really odd because it felt like they were supposed to be in love, and there was even a lot of parts where she called him baby, but there was no payoff to that, and it just didn't make sense. Do you I agree? Catch, I didn't catch any of that baby talk, but they must have cut ten minutes out of this movie or fifteen minutes, and they decided to like, you know what? We can't cut any of the, the, the deaths or the action scenes, so we'll just cut exposition, so that so yeah. the movie will make less sense, but people won't care. Because it's not about that. It's just, and maybe me watching this movie, I feel like, and maybe I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be how you felt last last week or last two weeks ago episode. Yeah, I feel like this movie it had a lot of potential, and yeah. it was like a, it's an A student that got like a B minus, and I yeah. feel like it could have, it could have added a little bit more, and it would have been better. You talking about my high school career here? Am I, being, <laughs> am I being too hard on it right now? A plus talent. But uh, C minus effort. I feel like uh, I'm disappointed in it. Yeah. So here's the here's the problem. This is the first time you've seen this movie, so you have no nostalgia towards it. True. This movie is not for a 30 plus year old man. <laughs> for the you know for the first time, this this movie is for a teenager and True. a twenty and a twenty something that just wants to see the the gore. You right? going on a date, high school yeah, date? Yeah. You, you want the slasher movie? That's what this movie's for. This is not for a 37 year old man watching it for the first time, where. You will and would rightfully, you know, request a coherent story to go with your movie, but you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it in a final destination. Please give this to me, James Wong. Yeah. Please, please. So. No, I mean, listen. You know what he's? This guy was busy doing instead. Instead what? of making, he's cutting out key pieces of dialogue. Yep. I saw this on IMDb. Now you can call it out as as IMDb falseness or or false lies, right? Like Johnny Drama is calling out Jimmy Kimmel, but. In the opening scene, <laughs> apparently Devin Sawa was supposed to pretend to be asleep. He actually fell asleep for four hours. This, <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> now tell me, tell me the next story, and I have something to say about both of them. Yeah, all right. What so else then the have? next one that I saw on IMDb, and it's got to be true because it's on IMDb, the shot of Alex's bedside clock, which fades from 1 a.m. to 180. Did you think that part was cool? Did you like cool that part? part? That was very cool. Let me yeah. tell you something about it. It took five days to get correct, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think uh, there needs to be an intervention. I need to talk to you about you diving into these IMDb <laughs> uh, movie goofs and trivia, and I think we need to put a ban on it. Like remember, remember back this way back in like twenty seventeen when I put a ban on Rotten Tomatoes on the show, <laughs> and then I lifted it. You did. I feel like we need to put a ban on IMDb's <laughs> trivia section, just because like this is something that someone clearly made up. Like no one's interviewing him. <laughs> The director about Devin Sawa taking a nap on set. Like, this is not happening. <laughs> Were you there? Do you know? And as far as the clock changing from 100 to 180, that's that's like a three second. I could have done that in high school. And I'm, well, they, I'm, I'm not computer science. They didn't say it took five days to like shoot the clock or it was CG. <laughs> like, maybe it took a CG guy five it's days a, to get it. It's a right. red bar. It's like, what's five days about it? You're banned. <laughs> you're banned from at least one episode. You're banned from IMDb <laughs> movie trivia. Listen, I'm just hitting, I'm, I'm giving people like very hard hitting trivia here. Yeah. And I'm, I'm breaking down why they cut out important things because they're spending five days shooting a clock, a digital clock. And they're letting Devin <laughs> Sawa take a, take a four hour nap on the chair. But James, the movie makes no sense. We're leaving out story exposition. No, no, no. I can't. Don't bother me right now. I'm trying to he's get sleeping. this clock thing right. And he's trying sleeping to get the over clock there. Yeah. <laughs> and put, keep your voice down. Devin's sleeping. <laughs> anyway, this is what's going on in this movie on the, on the background. Okay. S- speaking of Devin Sawa, teen heartthrob himself, Tiger Beat. Is there something special about this dude, Alex Browning, that gives him some type of premonition or vision? Like, what? what is – is this supernatural? Does he have something special about like him? in the beginning of the movie, they give off this vibe that, like, he's a very nervous kid or maybe maybe especially nervous about travel and things like that. 
or maybe he's seen premonitions in the past that he at least wasn't present for, or maybe he has visions of disaster, which would be terrible to go through. Uh, but this is not the movie telling us this. This is me gleaming this off of his character, which is either good acting by him or unnecessary interpretation by me, <laughs> or something that was in the was something that was supposed to be like inferred, but was deleted by the by the by by the editors. What I think, think it was good acting by him. Yeah. I actually think he did pretty good. Like you know, we joke about Toby Maguire or whatever, but I actually think he was decent in this. Like he did, he acted sort of crazy in a good way. I feel, and he he was a little squirrely at times, but I, it was believable. It's a great word because that's him. He's yeah. squirrely. In he movies, is. he's a squirrely guy. You, you've seen Idle Hands, right? Like, he's yeah. in that. He's very know, squirrely in Idle Hands. And by the way, how do we forget the triumphant return? We did Little Giants, like, yeah. seven years ago at this point. So this is his first time back on our show, well, isn't it? He, yeah, well, he's not squirrely in Little Giants, but that was, that was you know, possibly he was his first role. Junior. You know? Then, right? So he was also in, um, if you recall, he was Stan. Yes, In, uh, in the Eminem Stan. music video. He was Stan. also... Right in those letters, very squirrely yep. looking. He was. Very squirrely looking. He was. H- how would you react to your premonition if you were having these visions? Like, did you think he handled it well? Or do you think he he tried it? Because he, he helped us, he killed his cool pretty good there on the plane for a bit. Did and he? And I actually, I faked out. I, it got me faked out. Did for he For a know? bit. For a uh-huh. bit. He woke up in a cold sweat though. All right. If I, if I... St- saw what he saw and then like like the thing like the tray table being broken and things were repeated lines repeated that i had envisioned just like the type of deja vu that you can't ignore yeah i'm off that plane yeah Yeah. i mean i guess i i guess i was thinking about him in his vision why when he kept his cool well he did not keep his cool you're right when he woke up and freaked the hell out which i guess i would too yeah but if you like you said it earlier too let's say you're sitting next to him the classmate I forgot the guy's name, the jerk guy, the jock dude. Carter. Uh, Carter, Carter, right, it, which is a perfect name for that guy. Yeah. But he, he like, takes offense that Devin Sawa is, like, having this premonition. Like, he gets, yeah. he gets upset about this thing. Like, would you react that way? Like, he almost took it upon himself to be, like, an air marshal and, like, like tackle him. <laughs> well, he is the type, you know. <laughs> he's, like, yeah. he's like, get down, buddy. You're going to ruin yeah. my trip. Yeah, well, at that point, you know, he's, he's, he's threatening to, like, not get this flight off the ground here. And He's just trying to get laid Paris. in Paris, man. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, getting laid in Paris is not the same as getting laid in America, you know. So, <laughs> I mean, would, would you get off? Like, I, I don't know. Would I, I get off mean, in Paris? Yes, I would. Yeah. I mean, multiple times. <laughs> oh, you mean the plane? Okay, exactly. Uh, uh, I like to think I'm a pretty level-headed guy. Yeah, not to be, you know, persuaded by some nut job. Would I pull an alley larder and like after the smoke is settled, get up yeah. and leave? She thought a bit. Probably not. I'd probably go down on that plane. <laughs> Maybe you're better off dying on the plane than getting your 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 throat slashed <laughs> by like <laughs> a, a computer monitor. Getting your throat slit by a computer monitor. Yeah. yeah. And, no. And, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I wouldn't have gotten off the plane. That guy's nuts. If he was my friend, I would have gotten off. I uh if I, I were I, Todd. Yeah, totally. Yeah, Todd. Uh, but Todd's brother stayed on the plane and it, and it was a whole thing, right? So yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think that that's not realistic at all. By they're the like, way. oh, you go with him, go no, with him. No, the brothers are either st- they're sticking together, either they're both on the plane or they're both coming off. What'd you think about the cop too that was like you guys are staying. And it was like, they were going to make the teachers both stay. And she's like, I can't let the students go <laughs> those without kids me. Never, those kids never would have came back. Like, <laughs> I mean, they're not teachers. coming back now, but they're not, they're not that, never coming back now. That but. cop did not give a crap. He was like, I don't yeah. care. Okay, fine. Yeah. One of you can go. Yeah. But the, did you hear what they said? I, if I'm remembering correctly, wasn't it that they have to take the next flight or something? They're like, oh, there's another one at 11 that they can yeah, take. Yeah. Yeah, so they with, can- were they going to let them all go on at 11 or was it just the, just the, a few of them and Devin sh- Sawa was out? I'm not sure I'm putting Devin Sawa back on a plane. If I'm, if I'm the airline, that kid's got some explaining to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, e- if even, if him, the, even if the plane was safe, you know what I mean? What do you think about flying in general? Are you, are you, a, are you a, a nervous flyer? Are you a calm flyer? Like you were yeah, saying you're not, a level-headed not, guy. Not typically nervous. Uh, I got, I have sinus issues, so I got the ear thing going on, but like, yeah, Turbulence never affects me. Like if place starts shaking a little bit, I'm fine with it. I was in one of those 
freaking I don't even know what you call them. Like a prop uh, plane? Yeah, in uh in Puerto Rico that flew from one end of the island to the other, where it was like me and like three other people on the pilot. Yeah. That's as scary as it gets. Yeah. But I'm I'm good flying. I mean, when when I'm in a plane, like I try not to think about what I what I'm doing. Like I'm in a chair, like that uh, 10,000 feet in the air, you know, yeah. and you're like in a chair and it's like, yeah. I guess if it's going down, you could kind of coast or glide. But I flew with a friend of mine who was a pilot in, in a, like a Cessna or whatever, like a two seater. Yeah. And that he's, he's somebody that I would trust my life with. Yeah. But you know, when I thought about what I was doing there, I'm like, okay, this is kind of, kind of nerve wracking. And I remember when we were coming back in and we were landing, you could feel the yeah. thing like going now, sideways. Now let me, let me tell you, I know this person that you're flying. Yeah. With, and like, all due respect to him. Yes. He's still, like, at the time, he's still kind of an amateur, right? Well, he had, no, he had his license. He had his license. Yes. But, like, he's a novice. He, well, in he's the not field, a professional. In the field, exactly. And That's he's not scary. A pro. That's scary. But I trusted myself with him. I trust him too. But, like, that's <laughs> like, you know, imagine getting surgery. You know, <laughs> like a by a doctor's, a doctor's first surgery. <laughs> you know, and he could end up being Dr. James Andrews, whatever, the best surgeon of all time. But like, it's his first surgery. You know, that's, that's <laughs> oh, scary. Like, yeah, but, scary. But, but this friend of mine had, had I don't know how a many hours A thousand hours, hours he had. or it whatever. Was, a thousand hours. You, know, you had to hours. get a lot yeah. of hours. It wasn't yeah. like the first time he flew by I know, himself. it was the first time he flew a plane, but like, that's scary though. I mean, <laughs> it is, look. Of, all the, of all the flyers in the world, he's on the, 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 the shorter side of experience. But here, but the thing, would you rather know the person that's the pilot or you have like what's the movie where Denzel's like drunk and he's like a like a pilot flight, like you don't know flight. about the other guy yeah flight yeah, I right don't, I don't know maybe I, maybe I'd rather not know the pilot because like, <laughs> I'll just assume he's the greatest pilot of all time <laughs> you know you got t- you got t- you got Maverick yeah. flying with yeah. you yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, never mind never mind the other side of that where it's like oh he could be drunk I don't know do you, I don't know this guy do you think like fighter pilots like let me let me ask this like a fighter pilot like becomes like a like a Boeing flyer like is that like an indie car driver like driving to the grocery store in like a regular car like becoming a taxi cab driver is yeah that? yeah like how boring is that you're like going 35 miles an hour when you used to like drive I feel like every once in a while those are the type of people they'll like they'll make turbulence on purpose yeah. <laughs> just to feel the rush again <laughs> yeah oops the, the instruments oops. oh sorry out. guys oh, yeah we're going through some rough patch here yeah. oh my god all right well anyway what so what do you think that this plane going down, like they get off the plane, right? They, they, they jump off of the plane. He's obviously right. Nobody believed him. The thing blows up. Who would? Who should? And everyone's right. all pissed at him. It's like they, they say he saved their life. Yeah. Is that fair? I mean, it's, it's an odd thing because survivor's guilt is a real thing. But like, yeah, to blame this poor kid for having a premonition and it being right. It's not like he's the one. It's not like he strapped a bomb to the plane. Well, you it's know, like, it. yeah, I, I think about Todd's dad in particular, like yeah. the guy that was his friend and Todd, who who looked like he was like 50, by the way, I, <laughs> these, these people were way too old to be playing high school students. Yeah. It made no sense. It's like, I know it's a thing, but like, would you be upset with him for pulling you off that plane? No, but you certainly feel weird about it. It's You feel a weird way about it. Like I should have died. I would probably thank the kid. I'd, I'd be like, man, you saved my life. But like other people, like I can't like. It's, it's it's like a different level of grief, you know? It's true, especially when the one teacher, like, she sent the guy back on the plane. Like, if yeah. I was her, yeah, I'd yeah. feel bad about that. But Carter, like, what is he, what is that guy upset about? Like, he had no, it was him and his girlfriend, they both got off. What yeah, does his he girlfriend, care? His girlfriend got off and he got off himself later. He wanted to get he, off in Paris. He, he did. <laughs> he still got off. So it's yeah. like, it, it happens. <laughs> And yep. Allie Larder was like just a weird person, right? Clear Rivers was her name. And mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought it was Claire. Turned out it's Clear. Yeah, it's <laughs> Clear. Goddamn <laughs> Clear Rivers. Are you joking? <laughs> what, what is this? They said that they named it after like James Wong's like assistant or something. I saw yeah. again, another IMDb fact, but you maybe I have to like you call me out on that. I just didn't think that the chemistry between her and Sawa was there. And maybe it was because of all this like nah. doctoring going on behind the scenes I don't know. It's like there's two so, main characters. It's her and, and Alex, but she got off, like you said, after she thought about it and then followed him. I don't know. The The rest of the people just, they got kicked off themselves. Mm-hmm. So it just seemed like a weird vibe between what was happening. Like she wanted to be off, so she wasn't mad at him. I agree. And like, yeah, and they, they didn't know each other, like written into the story. So it's like, yeah, it's, sure, there's a little awkwardness and maybe 
And then she she admits later on that she had the same premonition, not the the visual representation of what was going to happen, but the feeling of it. Like she yeah. felt Devin Sawa's character's fear. And that's like a whole thing that messed with her mentally. But on the chemistry front, like, could they have just run it back with um with Jessica Alba yeah, instead of Ali Lauder in this scenario, right? Jessica Alba like, is too busy to do this right now. Was she too good for it at that point? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. But but I I think that they had more chemistry and I think she would have done a better job. Or, I'm or not maybe, saying Natalie Lutter's bad. Or maybe just like sub out Devin Sawa for Paul Walker. Or is Paul yeah. Walker too is Paul Walker too old at this point? No, well he's not he actually playing like a high school student in no, a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played undercover cop in uh, Fast and Furious in two thousand or ninety nine. So I guess too old. And just shave yeah. him, you know. They just shave his shave his body shave hair, him. you know. Shave yeah. him. A shaven a shaven Paul Walker. <laughs> Give him some nair. <laughs> make him some baby baby butt smooth. Oh man, I mean this really is the dark episode. Yeah. This is after, this is after we can dark. Say whatever the hell we want, yeah. man. The ghosts so, are interesting. Let's we'll talk about death and destiny for a second mm-hmm. here before we get into this. But they escape death, and the the whole thing is that death is chasing them. Do yeah. you believe in this? Is this oh, is this man. something that you think that this, you would do? Fall I believe for? in ghosts. Yeah, you <laughs> the know? ghosts of death. Tony Todd after you. Have any of the think? ghosts ever fly out of the walls? And no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> do I mean, any I, of these? Any of these? <laughs> no. Uh, the the question of death and destiny. Are you kidding me? At four a.m. Yeah, Girl, you're asking me these philosophical questions. I can Drew? tell you what IMDb says, but I'm not allowed. So yeah, these brain teasers are driving me wild. Drew. <laughs> Destiny? Yeah, no, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't. You're not, think you're not a believer. We're all we're not all here. The right place at the right time. I mean, I could I could get into my whole feelings on love and relationships being proximity based rather than destiny based, and, and there'd be another person that could impose me on this, and like neither of us would be right, you know. So no, I I don't believe in I don't believe in de- destiny as far as death goes. Right place, right time. You know, if we're both standing on a street corner and I go to cross and there's a car coming and you pull me back, I can't say, well, it just wasn't my time to go. I'd be like, thank you. I almost did something really stupid and you saved my life. You know? So so you don't believe in in the the you got to pa- save intervene from someone no. so that it passes to the, the next like person. There, there's no there's no guy in the clouds with a joystick controlling my walking path with a d-pad you know what i mean that's <laughs> not, not a simulation happening. no no i i think it's kind of funny because this movie reminds me of a time travel movie where the rules don't make any sense and they don't bother to try to explain them like they just yeah. kind of throw them out fair it's like the same kind of thing where like devon saw was breaking down like the passing of the like it's almost that chart that he was drawing when he was going all like riddler in his, in his apartment oh, yeah. or his bedroom or whatever yeah and He's got the the line, and he's like, "You're next," and this person's next, and then that person. Sure. I don't know. I I feel like they sort of explain the rules, but then they don't. And I know I'm again. I'm maybe being that that parent that wants their kid to get the A here, and mm-hmm. I know that James Wong's just giving me a B plus, B minus, like, mm-hmm. and I gotta just accept it because take the B minus. It's okay. He'll get an A next time. But maybe the teacher was a dick, and you gotta, yeah. like, you know, you just gotta, gotta but you take said it, move he, on. He didn't direct two, right? It was someone else. You said, right? No, yeah, he, yeah, he directed three. But two was the one that I thought yeah. was good. And two but, was a good one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> so I say what you will. This poor guy. But I, I agree with you. I don't believe in that kind of thing either. Like, I think that it, it, it's just, I don't know. I think that Devin Sawa was sort of like the mad scientist trying yeah. to make sense of the craziness. Like, it was his theory. It didn't have to be true. Like, he didn't have to be right. Like, and like. Because things were kind of skipping around, like who's to say in even in the movie world he was right? It's just this stupid True. theory. And although they had that little cloud that was looming and stuff like yeah. that, and it was sort of like coming for him. We'll talk about that in a second, but I think maybe the best way to do this, and and I gotta give you credit to this idea. We're not oh. typically a plot driven show here, but maybe we talk about let's go through the deaths. We'll talk a little bit about the characters, because that's what this movie's all about, the deaths. Mm-hmm. And then we can maybe rate them. You're going to give me credit for a movie that's like all it's about is is the is the mousetrap style deaths. Yeah, you're going to be credit for going through the deaths hey, one by I, one. We have to, you know. I mean, you're, I'll you're take the, the credit. I'll take. I mean, I'm, I'm a genius. You're you the know, genius of true, this show. You know, this is the brains of the it's last a great podcast idea. Here. And you know, 
You, you never would have thought of it. No one ever would have thought of it. Thank you. No one did think of this. Thank you. We're Thank the you first for the ever. Thank you for the credit. <laughs> the first ever that's ever <laughs> gone down. This is the first time this movie's ever been broken yeah. down. You're break, breaking yeah. ground on the last row no podcast. No one's ever here. talked about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I, the idea and the spin that I'll put on it is, so I think, you know, you said we can rank the deaths. We'll talk about them. But I want to ask you too, during these, would you rather die in a plane crash or this death? Mm, because okay. some of these, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe you would rather go down on the plane. Maybe some you wouldn't. I have I have an answer to that question that might blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> what you, what you hear will shock you. What, what you hear will shock you. Click on page three. <laughs> Listen what to you the see on page show. three what may potentially shock you. No, you know, I have some thoughts. I have to okay. say this. Bad way, by the way, is a master clickbait headline <laughs> creator. We should we should take advantage of that more for our yeah. podcast because yeah. he's very good at creating clickbait yeah, headlines clickbait, just as a joke. Tweets, clickbait tweets. But yeah, let, let, let's start with it. So let's talk about his best friend, Todd. Don't call him Todd with two Ds. Todd, Todd with one D. So I, I work with a Todd, and like, and like, now the name it has no meaning to me anymore. Todd. Like, what's a Todd? Todd. <laughs> Todrick? Is Todrick? It Todd? To- Toddathy? It's like <laughs> Todd. Like, it doesn't make, like, it's not a real word to me anymore. If you say it long enough, it's, it, it ceases to mean, it yeah. mean anything. I understand what you mean. It's like you stare at a word for so long, like the, yeah. like, oh, T H E, what? The? Is that Todd. how it's spelled? Just like Todd. Like, what a name. What, Sorry, Todd? all Todds. <laughs> Nothing personal. People are just unsubscribing as Todd. you listen. Todd. So, Todd, Todd with one D is apparently, I, again, according to IMDb, let me bust out the news here just because it's our last chance to do so. But I saw there was a fact that it means death in, in German, Ooh. so which may or may not be true. I'm not a German speaker. I mean, you didn't fact check that? No, I didn't. Jesus. You know, IMDb already did it for me. So. <laughs> You're <laughs> they, banned. Listen, that's it. T- one, one week ban. They already told me about the 180 being. <laughs> <laughs> They're breaking out on any news here. Come to find out, Todd is nothing close to meaning death yeah. in German. <laughs> it means life. It means life. <laughs> so this, this, his brother died in the crash, and he's got survivor's guilt himself, apparently. I think his dad's putting that survivor's guilt on top of him. Yeah, bad father alert going off. Bad father alert going on. Off screen. Off screen bad, bad father. But... Describe the situation that he's in and what what happens with this guy, because there's a lot of fake outs in this. So, yeah. So first of all, he's on the toilet. And I got to say, the first time when I saw like he was in the bathroom there after the crash, you know, he's in his he's in his bathroom. The, the, the camera shows him taking a dump, right? Yeah. Cut back, Drew, to in the airport. Mm-hmm. What's this character do before he gets on the plane? Taking a dump. Taking a dump. Gotta now, clear one in, out. in movies, typically, we don't see anybody going to the bathroom. It never, True. You never see it. Name me another movie where you see a character take two dumps in one movie. <laughs> this is a it first. Exist. This, is, this is a one of one where you it get two exist. dumps from one character in a movie. Name me another. You can't do it. Dude, it doesn't exist. <laughs> That's I think it. You, I think you really broke it down here. Yep. <laughs> this is this is what I watch movies about. This is what I look for nowadays. He's got a movies. notebook of yeah. amount of dumps in a movie, dumps, and he busted no, that one. the second second time I got that second slash. It's the only the first time I've ever got the second slash. <laughs> I never, honestly, I never would have thought of that. And you, <laughs> you just blew my mind with that whole thing right there. Yep. Oh yeah. This is the this is the headliner. This is this is the headliner. <laughs> you gotta cut yeah. it right now. Yep. So um, he t- he dumps so hard the toilet starts leaking. But oh wait. <laughs> It's not his dump. It's death. It was death's dump. Yeah. So death starts leaking out of the toilet with water. You know, but it Alex was like Mack style. Blue it was weird, wasn't it? Yeah, it looked like toilet was, cleaner water. Yeah, that, that's like when you mix the death with the water. What's like, what's that? Well, because stuff clear put, clear doesn't read. What's the stuff like a thousand flushes? That thing that you put in the uh, back yeah, of the bowl yeah, 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 is that yeah, what it yeah, was? Yeah. So I guess they got that. a really clean toilet. No, it's because because clear water doesn't read on screen. True. So you have to get it. It has to read green. The only thing blue. that reads is clear rivers. Clear yeah. rivers clear reads rivers on screen. Reads. Yeah, she reads. <laughs> Not clear water. So. <laughs> Oh boy, we're going uh, off the track. We're here. going off the rails here. So he starts shaving immediately, cuts his throat shaving. But no, it's just a nick. He's fine. I thought he was going to die from yeah. that. I thought he was going to imagine. Like, imagine that's what that's I like, Imagine how lame. That that's what I thought, especially with the water on the yeah. floor. They really did. A, yep. They did a number on me. Sticks a nose trimmer up his nose. Oh wait, maybe brain impaled. Nope, that another fake out. Fake yeah. out. 
Nope. Goes to the tub. Water catches underneath, slips to the tub. He hangs himself on, on the clothesline. Some, on some clothesline wire that I don't even know what it was doing there. Whatever. It was like um, his mom's pantyhose. His mom's and stuff. pantyhose, which he like kind of had like a weird fascination <laughs> it with. It was really that's weird. An, that's another thing. We're not gonna get into it. And um, long story short, he hangs himself. And uh, it looks it kind of looks like a hanging, like a like a suicide. And the water cleans itself up, Drew. It backs <laughs> into the toilet. Alex Mack. As if to show that, you know, death was covering its tracks. No DNA. And uh, there goes Todd. That's one down. Todd, Todd, Todd's down. One of, one of, one of yeah. what, five now, I guess? I, I'd i rather die in a plane crash than die that way, honestly. Yeah. I think I would. You would know what's interesting? Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to be strangled. No. It's just t- terrible. His eyes yeah. were bloodshot. Plane like, crash. Yeah. Good I'll effects, though. Good effects. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. You know, you know, they say when you die, like your bowels evacuate. Yeah. He was good. He's good. He's in the tub. We were cleared. He was already cleared. <laughs> Well, that's true. He already he already earlier. dumped he dumped twice yeah. in, in you know twenty four whatever. Yeah, hours. so he's like good. He's like and no cleanup necessary. You think he's good? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I I I I was also reading. I think it was on Wikipedia for this one, but they were talking about how they made it look like death was after them, and then they yeah. later in the movie they made him look more like accidents. Like was that done on purpose so that you really like make it read the death? Like you mentioned, like clear water doesn't read and all that stuff. Yeah. Was it done on purpose to make it seem like, hey, death is after him? I don't know. So it's funny because, like, in this specific death, the hanging kind of makes sense towards the character. True. That he may possibly be suicidal. He clearly wasn't. He was in good spirits. He was, like, jovial while he was picking his nose hair. But, like, in the next, de- not the next death, but the, the subsequent death where the teacher in the house and all that, where, like, so much shit happened in there. Yeah, the Rube Goldberg Yeah, machine. like, the house burned down, so it was, like, there's no evidence. So, like, death doesn't have to clear its tracks. You know what I mean? Yeah. I True. think it, it ultimately wants everything to look like an accident or, you know, a natural occurrence. Yeah. But I thought it was odd that it was specifically shown of it, like, cleaning itself up. And then like, water on the floor... Water on the floor, like accidents versus suicide. Why does death care? I mean, it could have, it, and it could have been just water on the floor, like the pipe leaked. Oh, by yeah. the way, he also hung himself. Yeah. Why does death care that people think he hung himself? I, I think it was probably done on purpose to to show that oh, death is after them. But it was just yeah. like it again. It it's just an unclear representation uh, that you know another proof that the the writing is kind of lacking. But right. You know, right. Who cares. That's not what we're here for. And then, we're here for. So, so you're saying that you'd rather die in the plane crash or you'd rather be hung? I'd rather have a plane crash, yeah. Plane crash too, yeah. yeah. Even though a plane crash sucks. So what yeah. about number two? This is Terry Cheney, also the actress from a movie called Saving Silverman, who plays the girl oh, who goes into the great, nunnery. Great, great underrated movie. I kept thinking, like, where the hell do I know her yeah. from? And, you know, she was she was in that movie. But She's training, training to become a How girl. does she go out? This is death number two. Oh, you know, she was uh, pancaked by a dump truck driver, Drew. Just like I Daffy like- Lee Gibbons. And no, I, yeah, hit by a bus. Boom. I like how they tried to get. They acted like Devin saw while he's like he's at the scene of the crime. Like he pushed her in it. Like they think he had yeah. something to do with Todd's yeah. death. And then it's like, oh, what did he do? Push her in front of the bus? Like mm-hmm. get the hell out of here. So he was on scene for Todd's death, like well after the fact, but he was there. And yeah, he was there for this death too. And of course, he was there for the teacher's death. But like. Yeah, this one's clearly like, yeah, he didn't, what was he in cahoots with the bus driver? They were all there too. It wasn't just him, you know, and Todd's death. You could also argue, hey, he was going to check on his friend because he was worried about him. Like, didn't need to say like, oh, he hung him and put him in the tub. That's a, you have to be like, like John Wayne Gacy levels of like master murderer to pull that off. Like, I I just don't understand that. So no, anyway. The the dump truck, the the truck driver, this character was like, she had like five lines. Yeah. And like she was there to like make out with with the bad boy Carter. So it's like easy come, easy go. I thought it was like kind of fitting that she that this character got nothing to work with and then died in like the quickest possible way. Did you think it was weird that they didn't seem too upset by it either? Like nobody seemed to care. No, like, the no, the boyfriend well, the boyfriend was unhinged from the start. True. So like I would say he wasn't any more or less hinged after his girlfriend died. <laughs> so he rehinged. He was the same amount of hinge. He was, they hinged him back. Yeah. 
I, I don't know. There's nothing more to say about her. She's no. she's dead. Move on, right? So I'd rather I'd rather talk about Saving Silverman more than yeah, talk about her me character too. in this movie. So number three is Mrs. Luton. Luton? 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 Luton. The teacher that put the other guy who spoke French back onto the onto the plane and she had that survivor skill. What yeah. what's her what's her death scene? How did death come for her? How much time you got, Drew? I guess how much time do we have left? I don't know. <laughs> A lot happened here, so I'm, to make it quick, she turned the stove on, pilot wouldn't lit, so she lit the thing, and the ga- there's a gas leak now on the stove, so the gas is filling up in the house. She goes and uh, uses the tea up. She doesn't like the tea, tea too hot. She didn't like the mug, right? She didn't like, like the mug. Because it so, was a school. Yeah, so she, she turns from tea to vodka. She put ice and vodka in a mug. The mug cracks, so the vodka starts leaking all over the house. Is vodka slip- more slippery than water? Or is it less? I feel like it's less slippery it's than water. It's less because it like evaporates yeah. alcohol. But, yeah. But anyways, leaking all over the place for future slippage. She puts the cup over her CRT computer and it short circuits the computer. Screen explodes. Throat cut with glass. Now that's awful. Pretty bad. But she's still alive. It's like she's choking on her blood. And then boom, the house catches fire from the gas, from the gas leak. She reaches for a towel to try to like post her wound. And she pulls it down and accidentally gets a butcher knife. And this is a comedy of errors at this point. Yeah. Butcher knife into the chest. And then Devin Sawa shows up and it looks like he did it. What and the she, hell was he doing in that house? Yeah. yeah. And she died. And then the house exploded, by the way. And as he run, runs away from the house, the house exploded. So you, we mentioned Rube Goldberg machines or whatever yeah. they call it, right? That is yeah. like. This was, this was absurd. Yeah. It's like a Parker Brothers game is what it yeah. was. It's yep. just ridiculous. And like. The fact that Devin saw was just lurking outside the window too, because she yeah. called the cops and, and, and whatever was happening. Right. And this becomes this huge thing, but they went up saying later, Oh dude, you, he's like the house burned down. Yeah. But your feet were in there. They, it caramelized the blood and your footprints are in there. <laughs> it's like, his, cause his fingerprints are on the knife. Like he's holding the knife, like a complete yeah. dumbass. Like what was he doing? He thought he was going to save somebody. Thought he was going to be a hero. It just, it makes no sense, and he shows no common sense whatsoever. Like, he's prime suspect number one. The cops are already up his butt right now, and they're all over him. It makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, you can't help but sound like a lunatic when you're trying to describe that death is after you. Like, the only one that kind of believed him maybe is, is Allie Larder. Yeah. His character. But, like, this teacher, she's not going to want to hear it. That, oh, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to to sleep under my mattress for safety? Like, what, what, are, you, what are you supposed to do? What did, so. what did you think of her as a character? Because she seemed paranoid as hell. Not mm. somebody that, like, the gas isn't lighting, you're going to go light a match. Like, I would be mm. thinking, hey, maybe this is going to explode right now because death's after me. Mm. Like, I don't know. I just didn't really like her very much. I didn't feel bad when she died. No, oh, man, you're cold-blooded. Man. I didn't. Cold I just didn't like her. I don't know. There was no, something yeah, about she, her. She, she, she had survivor's guilt, man. I felt bad for her. I really did. She was going to move. She was leaving. She was leaving town. If she leaves town, does she leave death? Loser leaves town match, man. Yeah. She lost. Loser leaves She's town. Gotta... But if she leaves town before death gets her, isn't death the loser? I think, well, death will chase her because yeah. it's going to rub it in. Like it's she paranormal lost activity and... uh, rules. You know, it's, not activity. The, it's not the house, it's the person. That's yeah, it the doesn't end. have geographic boundaries. Yeah. Like there's no, <laughs> she's out right. of the zip code, so it's yeah. done. Like it's going to chase her. It's true. It's true. But what do you, so what do you think about the FBI? Do you think they were going to use him as like their fall guy? Is that is that what the plan was here? Because the one guy sort of believed him. He said, "Oh, it's kind of weird. I kind of almost believe him." Yeah, I feel like these accidental deaths they can't be piling up at the police station. You know, the chief's going to want to murder. We're going to want somebody to blame for these. The heads have got to roll, man. Heads have got to roll, somebody. Man. Yeah, this paperwork, man, it's piling up. And yeah, Devin Sawa, this freaking what's his name, Alex. Alex. He's there every time, and he's like stupidly interjecting himself into the crime scene. Hey, I'm just putting air in the tire. Like yeah. what? <laughs> what? Making sure it's safe. Are you, you cutting see, the brakes, son? No. Did, did you see his room too? I mean, describe oh, yeah. his room to people. His room after the plane crash was full of like how-to guides to explode an airplane. Because he's trying to, uh, like, he's he's obviously he's innocent. He's trying I to figure out how it happened. But to a prosecutor, that's like, oh my god, open and shut case, Johnson. You're done. <laughs> uh, what about Steve Stifler himself? Don't call him Billy. But call him Billy. <laughs> oh, Steve. Uh, see, did you like his portrayal in this movie? I kind of did. I did. Um, but him has like the dork versus being underused. Stifler. You know? I, I think 
the way I read it online was that he was supposed to be quote the class clown, but he wasn't clowning anything. He was just he was just there. When, when you say Reddit online, did you mean IMDb uh, trivia? Possibly. Okay. Possibly. <laughs> I gotta uh, hide my attraction. He's just here. like a. He's kind of just like a little dork. I don't know. And I thought he was. I thought he did a good job with it. I liked him, and he wasn't in it enough, in my opinion. I yeah. think that this movie could have used more Steve Stifler, Billy. Yeah. Don't sure. you think so? I think like he would have been a great character to have survived. Yes, and, like been in the second one. He he's like Sweet Lou in a little known movie, Cabin uh, Fever. Even though yes. you know, spoiler alert. Yes. Yeah, you know, but he reminded me of that kind of character in this. Yeah. But what what was his what was his fate in this? If you're ranking it, and I guess we forgot to say on the last one. With the truck, getting hit by a truck or the plane crash, and then also the way that the teacher died or the plane crash. Like, which is the worst death here of these so far? I guess we didn't even do that. The worst death is probably like that, the Rube Goldberg track that that the teacher went through. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Getting back to the plane crash for just a quick second, you know, I I, I gave you that uh, clickbait. I'm going to pay off on it now. I would almost prefer in any scenario to be in that plane crash if I had to go. Because I had this weird fascination with, like, wanting to be around during, like, a large event. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if I got to go, like, if I'm, like, like, imagine the world ending, you know? Yeah. Or imagine, like, this, this pl- the plane's going down, like, it's a surreal moment, and it's like, you know what? If I got to go, this is an experience. You want to be part know? of the experience? Like, you don't want to yeah. just die of old age there? Yeah, but if I, if I died at 96 in my bed, it's like, you know, eh. So if zombies like, attack, you want to turn into yes, a zombie right away? Zombie apocalypse. That's like that's a thing. I don't yeah. want to get eaten to death by zombies. <laughs> don't don't get it wrong. But like I want I want to I want to see the end of the world. You know what yeah. I mean? You want to watch it happen. Yeah, I want to like it be an experience. You oh, know what okay. I mean? Okay. I thought you mean you want to be part of like the the end of it. Like like you're going out with it. No, I mean like if you know if a meteor hits us and I die instantly, I won't I won't. There's nobody's experiencing. You're it. not going to know just, what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like if shit's going down. Yeah. You know. Like, you know. I'd like to be a part of it. So are you going in the plane or are you, are you getting hit by a dump truck? I think I take the dump truck. Actually. Yeah. Or the bus I, driver, whatever the hell it was. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll take, yeah, I'll take the instant death. If it's uh, instant if, death. If death, if death is guaranteed. Yes. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take that. If you're laying there twitching and you're not yeah. dead and then you die yeah. like six hours later of injuries. Yeah. yeah I'm taking the plane I'll crash the bus. Yeah. because the plane exploded. That seems like instant death, yeah. but I'll take the bus hit. And then what about the teacher? Right. Oh yeah, that's like word the worst. That's the worst one. It's worse. I mean, it's she worse, wasn't. It's worse than the tub. But is it worse than being poisoned, shot, stabbed, hung, stretched, disemboweled, drawn, and quartered, such as Vigo the Carpathian was? <laughs> like it's kind of on par with. that. I mean, isn't death it? is but a doorway to Vigo. <laughs> so I mean, depends on if you if you're a god, you know. Well, what What about Stifler here? I so, so we got. I think we got the ranking, and then we can. Yeah. Come back so to Stifler, it. he. They all <laughs> pile up and and Carter the asshole's car. For a reason I don't re- recall. Uh, they were I trying to go meet up with uh, They had to Sawa. meet up with Sawa at the beach where the plane went down. Yeah. So then Carter starts flipping out and then he you know, does this little joyride thing where he's like, you know, saying he's invincible and he can't die. And he's kind of driving without his hands and everyone's flipping out. He's, he's, he's acting like a maniac, basically. He's being unhinged, you know, as we say. Yeah. So stops his car right on the railroad tracks and like contemplates, is this my time? He decides no. Today is not my day to die, but death killed the battery of the car, obviously, and death <laughs> locked his seatbelt so he couldn't get out of his seatbelt. It's belt. a mass murder right there. And then he starts flipping out that he doesn't want to die because, of course, because everyone who talks tough about this ends up yeah. being a bitch at the end. Exactly. So, you know, so Devin Sawa saves his life, skips him in the death loop again, and then Stifler's screaming at Carter like, you suck, you know, look what you, you almost got us killed, this, that, and the other thing. And the train hits some car shrapnel, takes his head off. As he was, the whole time I'm standing there, I'm like, dude, you're way too close to that train. Too close to that like, train. You're too close, man. Get get no. back. Back up. And I don't want to say he deserved it because he didn't, but he if wasn't going to stand that close yeah. to yeah, a you train. Know, you know, you can't stand thought, the heat. Get off yeah, the kitchen. Yeah. Exactly. Get off and, the train. Get off the tracks when the train's coming through, as they say. What, what <laughs> as one would say. <laughs> what do you think about this guy driving like recklessly? Because he he was like. I'm going out on my terms. I'm going to kill myself. And, and it's like, had, you're going to kill everybody yeah. else. And he had like a real like villain car too. It was like a Camaro yeah. or something. It was I like forget. an SS. Like a Challenger yeah. or something. I don't know. It was. It was a muscle car. No, yeah. He sucked. But like. I hated that guy. He was like, yeah, I guess you can call him a bully because he tried to hit Stifler with his car like throughout the movie while Stifler's riding his bike. 
He was just like constantly like almost hit Stifler with his car. I guess that foreshadowed it in yeah. itself. Yeah. So so what about his death? Would you take the plane crash or any of these other deaths over this? Like, which is the worst death of that? I don't know. This decapitation, it was like kind of gruesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I probably don't. For for my family's sake, I don't, maybe I'd rather not get decapitated. Yeah. They're not going to so. glue your head back on. Like, would you like, would you rather there be nobody than have a body with no head? Like closed casket funeral yeah. kind of closed thing? Closed casket versus versus ceremonial casket because your True. body is not found. What's worse? I Maybe not found because then there's nothing there, but maybe that's better if it's, it spares them the, the, the gruesome brutality yeah. of, of your head getting chopped. And if, if your body's not there, it could be the whole thing of maybe he's alive somewhere. Yeah, maybe, maybe he's still out there. Maybe there's a Tom Hanks castaway situation. Yeah. Yeah, where there's that false hope. And his head went off, but it wasn't like at the neck. So it was like, I don't know where it was. Was it the jaw, jaw. or something, right? Which like is a diagonal worse. jaw. It's worse, I feel. I'd rather yeah, get it, it is clean worse. I'd rather, I'd rather go with the neck, yeah. So, I don't know. That's, I think I'd rather go down to the plane crash than that. I think I'll take you? the plane crash, too. Yeah. I think I would. Yep. And I, I think the teacher's one is still the worst, in, in my opinion. Yeah. But I think I'll take the plane crash See, out of that. See, death has a way of telling you, yeah, you better not cheat me, man, or I'm going to get you worse. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm just going to turn it to you to talk about sort of the end of the movie All and right. that final showdown. All right. I'm, I'm going to gloss through this because it's pretty pretty damn ridiculous. And like, I, it's beyond me describing it. And there's not much more to say about it. So Larder takes Sawa to her cabin because, of course, she has a cabin. Yeah. Why not? And he just goes and baby proofs the whole thing, which just, he's duct taping everything. He's trying to like fend off death. He's kind of like hunkered down. Come to find out, oh, wait, Drew, it's not his turn. He miscalculated. I feel like he had to remind Death that it wasn't yeah. his turn. Because, because Death, Death tried to get him. him. Death yeah. tried to get him, which makes me, my theory about his little drawing about who's next is, is bullshit. Yeah. And it's just a, it's a wrong theory that he has that we don't have to follow. So then once he realized that it's clear that is in trouble, she's in clear danger. She, he rushes to save her. Like, I got to save her. I don't know. And He's trying to save these people. Does he save anybody? No. Like, no. Not really. To this point, he's not saved one person. He, he's the equivalent of, a, of yeah. the padded cell crazy guy yeah. now of like he's got his drawings. Oh, no. He saved Carter. He did save Carter. Anyways, so he runs down there. And of course, there's an electrical storm and uh, Ali Lauder. There's a wire down. She's in trouble. Pool, above ground pool gets pierced. By the way, death loves using water. Yeah. It loves using you gotta water. You got to get water. You got to get wet. So, you know, so Larder and her dog are in trouble. And then Sawa's coming to save him. And then he gets a tree falling on him. And the tree pins him down and he almost drowns in a puddle. Which, you know how pathetic that is to, like, drown in a puddle? <laughs> His face that's, down. I, that's, like, the last thing I want to die by is, is death by drowning in puddle. Like a one-inch Yeah, one-inch puddle. Yeah. Like, just your nose and mouth are in the puddle and you die. That's pathetic, that's pretty man. pathetic. It's bad. Don't want to go down that way, but he just barely kicks out of that. <laughs> then he comes to find her in a car in a literal death trap, Drew. After he raced like, the cops yeah. away in a canoe, by the way. Yeah, there's a propane tank under the car. There's flames everywhere. There's <laughs> lacquer, you know. <laughs> every hazard guns? every hazard that you could find in a garage as, as, as it just engulfed this car. How much goddamn lacquer on the thing? <laughs> I keep thinking about <laughs> Greg Fokker. Yeah. <laughs> So Sal, uh, he just he just grabs the the the, the electric electric wire and just sacrifices himself. Gets shot back somehow. He lived, and then I call BS on that. And we find him in the epilogue, and that's the end of the movie. Why why is there an epilogue in this other than New Line mandated it? Because you got to set up a sequel, man. It, it it made no sense. I mean, yeah. it it just and and him he should have died. Like and and I'm just gonna say this right. Look, we're not going to spend a ton of time on this part, but I just have to talk about this epilogue, and this is the, the incompetency of the filmmaking here. And I yeah. get it. It's a thing, because we talked about it, and I know what you did last summer. They did the same thing, jumping out of the mirror. It's a, it's a trope. I get it. Yeah. But this was like six months later. It wasn't that much. Do yeah. you think that Devin Sawa, after all he's been through, would set foot on a plane and go back to Paris and have Hell like no. the happy-go-lucky, like carefree look? It had to be a dream that they didn't yeah. show as a dream. Yeah, no, if if I narrowly escaped a plane crash, yeah, and I'm good with planes, right? Probably not flying for a long time. <laughs> like a long time. Six like months decades, later? Like decades. 
But it wasn't just the plane crash. It was the plane crash and death coming for you. Yeah. So you got to put yourself back in the situation. Yeah. It's like spitting in death's face. Like it's Tony like death Todd. is like, oh, yeah, you want to get on this plane? You know, you know how easy I could, I could bring this whole plane down, buddy? To the destination you know? that he was trying to go to yeah. before the final destination the final he was destination. going to. Yeah. And then the whole situation with Carter getting got there, too. I mean, you have to talk about that part, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what to say other than. You know, a, a comedy of events involving flames and electricity and water, again, because we've got to have water, ends up with this 20-foot sign, neon sign, smashing Carter as the as the credits roll. It's just, it made no sense to me. And I don't know. Like, Devin Sawa finally got crazy again. If if you're this guy, you're going to be in an institution. And because you're going to, there's no way you can handle the stress, the mental capacity and the stress of all these incidents and I, I just don't even, I just don't see how you're, this could happen. You're just going to be that guy saying, that's coming for me. That's coming for me. It's yeah. coming for you too. It's coming for you. I mean, everyone will literally die, right? You're never going to live forever. He thinks he's going to cheat death. Like, what situation would you be in? Like, let's say he died of a heart attack. Yeah. Oh, death came for me. It finally got him. It's yeah. like, you're going to die. Everybody dies. Why right? couldn't death just like give him a brain tumor or something? That's true. A slow death. Can it like, not, can it not mess with, like the human form. Maybe, maybe it, it, can, it can only, it can only manipulate liquids and electricity <laughs> and metals <laughs> and metals. I think, I think it is. I don't know. And, and wind. I, it's really the elements. It's Captain America. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. don't you think that he should have been in a mental institution after this whole situation? Oh yeah. Yeah. 100%. Realistically. I mean, he, he didn't die. Right. So there's no on screen death. No, I can't recall all of these final destinations if he was in another one or not. I don't think he was. Like it would have been nice to have like a callback to like show him like it's like, oh man, you know, the new cast has these premonitions and they're ch- cheating death. Let's go to the source. Let's let's find out what, what this this famous guy did and they visit him in the sane asylum. Like yeah. that would be a thing. That would be a great scene. At the risk of breaking the scale, like we did with the superstorm from yeah. the day after tomorrow. I think maybe we should put death through the villain scale. Yeah, I don't think quickly. it's quickly. I don't think it's going to break the scale. But you don't think so? I think it's got flaws, but let's okay. go for it. All right. So if you're new to the show or you're returning to the show and you forgot, we have a villain scale on the show. There's four major categories, one through five on each. Look or style, hideout or layer, plan, and henchman. And death is going to go through this. I don't know that it's Tony Todd himself. Yeah, look or the, style bad way what do you think yeah there's there, there's the there's this perception out there this theory that it's that it's tony todd the 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 uh the mortician or whatever you want to call him that's not no we're not doing you're that, not doing so, that no so death the villain in this movie is is the unseen so how does the unseen get graded for looking style Drew? there's like little like wisps of the wind yeah. and stuff too uh, and like thunder a, and li- like lightning but there's also like, like the the you ever Water. see like heat like when you look at heat of a yeah. on hot like the yeah. hot uh, like road the you see like the waves yeah a little wavy yeah okay like that stuff showed up yeah it's still a one <laughs> yeah it's still a one I I mean like how do how do you rate water. You can't. I mean, yeah. you you kind of can't. The blue water, though. The blue water. Well, yeah, the the, the toilet water, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, the toilet water. it's <laughs> the toilet water is, is that is, better than a one? A toilet water. <laughs> 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 toilet water, it might be. I yeah. mean, it could be toilet water. It could be yeah. decent from, from, but... two dump t- from two dump Todd. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if it's got if it's got Todd's uh, excrement in it. Then maybe yeah. it's worse. <laughs> oh my god! No, I I, I think it's got to be a one. And like there, the accessories, there's... like the style, the accessories, like the accessor. What are the accessories? I don't know. I don't it, know. It's, are the accessories the water and the and the lightning and the electricity? You know what I mean? It's it's no. I think that that's more henchmen in my opinion. I feel. Oh, than, ooh, than interesting. The look or the style is to me the wavy lines. Hold that a couple thought. Of, yeah, a couple hold of that, wavy lines. That is an interesting point. Let's go. Let's go. One here. It's, it's just yeah. it doesn't. And and I'm not giving it Tony Todd. If it was Tony Todd, it'd be like a three or a four because he's pretty yeah. awesome. But I, I think it's got to be a one, right? Yeah. All right. What about the hideout or the layer? Like, where I mean, is death? I mean, like it initially resided in the plane, but really it's everywhere. Is it in hell? <laughs> well, well, yeah, because where does it come from? Where does it where does it come out of to get you? But it can come from heaven too. It's heaven and hell. It's like this whole thing, you know? True. I don't know. 
This is this is a, this is an existential question that I'm not sure we're prepared to have at 5 a.m. in the morning. The fact that it's all around you, yeah, is pretty good, and I, I think they don't deserves, know where it's coming from. I think it deserves high high score. I agree. Like because, I would say at minimum because, three. Yeah, because it's everywhere. I'm, I, I would give it a four. Yeah, I, I'm not going to argue that because yeah. it's everywhere and it's lurking. Yeah. And if we're going to give the penguin his sewer a four, then I think death can get <laughs> can get a four, right? Like. It's not, Terry, thinking, it's not Terry Silver's mansion. Let's get that straight. I mean, he actually got a four too somehow. I don't know yeah. why we gave him a four. Yeah. I think, I, but but we we gave Catherine Tremell and her like sweet houses on the beach a five. Yeah. But death, I I think death gets a four, right? Maybe. Yeah. Can it be a five? Nah, let's go four. Let's go four. Let's go four. Okay. So what about death's plan? Like to kill you, I guess. Yeah, but like the way it did it though, like the the, the roundabout like comedy of errors kind of amateur it, it, wasn't you it? know that's what gets me like and the plan the the, the pettiness the pettiness yeah. drew it was of like how dare you how dare you walk off that airplane yeah i had you down for being dead how dare you spit in my face what do they say right next yeah. stop it's you yeah, <laughs> i'll see you stop. soon <laughs> i'll see you soon it's like, it's like they say i'll see you soon next so stop I'm, it's you I'm kind of torn on this because the plan is to kill everyone that I want to kill, right? It's vindictive. Yeah. But like, and then it waits six months because if you yeah. skip it, it just waits six months and comes back around. Yeah, it's again. pretty crappy, isn't it? The plan. Yeah. It seems flippant. I it, don't know. It's, it's, it's a bad plan. Well, it's a good plan. Awful execution. Execution, yes. We, also, we, all, we always factor in execution to the plan. So... I'm fine with the three. I think a three because it kills enough people and it's yeah. got it's got some the execution, the fact I, that yeah. it lit I the respect, vodka on fire, yeah. it's good. I respect it's like uh it's the methods. Uh, what are, what's the word? Not not methods. I don't respect the methods. <laughs> I, I respect you disrespect the methods. I respect the fact that it's like, hey, you know, you're supposed to be dead. Damn it, I'm gonna get you. I got you're, you. You're gonna die. I respect that. You're that's dead, that's buddy. a concrete that's a concrete plan now the way it goes about it yeah is is you know it's pretty bad that's where it loses points bad execution yeah. I, I think a three is fair it's almost yeah. in the middle there yeah. and the fact that it lit that house on fire and caramelized his footprints just so he could get caught <laughs> by the fbi that's that's vindictive too but it's not yeah. good if it was a best plan it would just kill whoever it yeah. wouldn't go after specific people yeah. you go you take what you can get yeah i'll get somebody yeah and it took him there. So, okay, well, what about the henchmen? So now this is an interesting one because do we call the thunder and lightning and, and the, the, the manipulation of things? Is Tony Todd one of the henchmen? Well, I feel like if in the Superstorm, if we, if we called a tornado a henchman, yeah. if we called a snowstorm a henchman, then we have to call, <laughs> you know, toilet water and, <laughs> and, pool, <laughs> and pool water, toilet butt water. And, and, and downed electrical wires as henchmen. I feel like we have to. It's manipulating them, right? Yeah, it's yeah. it's like behind the scenes it's, it's doing the, the tools of it's the, the tools, tools of the trade. Death. Yeah, the tools of death. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think of like other ones that we gave. So just for reference, I think we gave Shang Song a five for henchmen. We gave the Superstorm had a five. So this is up there. It's so, got to be at least a four. But here's the thing: like, how many times can you use water? Y- yeah, that's too that's much. my problem. Too that's much. My problem. It's where I'm docking points here. It relies too heavily on one henchman. That's true. And that. And that henchman, like, it's tough, but, like, it requires other henchmen to, to finish the job. True. Like, it tried to drown Devin Sawa in a puddle, but it required the, the work the tree? of the tree to pin him down. Yeah. The water on the ground <laughs> doesn't kill you. You need to add the electricity. Yeah. Right? And he almost got stabbed through the, the closet, but the fishing hook was going to give him tetanus. Yeah. And, you know, the tetanus sickness is not, yeah, it's not strong on. enough come on you're gonna, come this on is, there death. This is, should this be a two or a three come on there death it's maybe a, maybe it's a two it's a two it's a oh, two. oh man yeah this is uh but you know you know good for it for having henchmen for being a non-entity you know all right entity. so you want to know the grand score here so we'll do a recap so it got it got a one for looking style it got a four for the hideout in a layer and it got a three for the plan and then it got a two for the henchmen and it winds up with a 10. 10? Okay. So, you know, it, it's it's respectable, I suppose. And that would put you right in the in the realm of, let's see here. I'm just kind of looking at our list. This is like Richie Madonna. We got Mr. Freeze, Rachel Phelps from Major League. 
Okay. Not bad. Not it fits. bad. It fits not, like in that in that area. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Al from Angels in the Outfield is slightly ahead. Yeah. Emotep by half a point. Dusty Dinkelman okay. beats it out by number one. I mean, okay. it's interesting where it, where it lays, but I think you know the downfall of this thing was just it just wasn't effective, was it? Not no. as effective as it should have been. I I feel like if we do sequels of this series, Death would score higher. Well, we have sequels. to re-rate it. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it, it. I think it would score higher. Yeah, exactly. You learn from you learn from your mistakes. So. The way I the way I would close this episode out is what you said earlier. This movie isn't for a thirty something year old man to watch it for the first time. I was entertained, yeah. but it's got plot holes galore, and I just have to kind of let that B minus sit and be a B minus. Yeah, let it be a B minus. And maybe one day soon we'll do Final Destination too. Yep. But I yeah I enjoyed this, but again I had the nostalgia to work it with me as well. I've seen it multiple times, saw it in the theater, so you know it's one of those things where. My first experience, I was seventeen or something, sixteen. So, yeah, I think I think it did exactly what it wanted to do, and it has total faults, but I'm willing to ignore them. Am I being too hard on this movie, everybody? You got to let write in, and let me know. The Last Row Podcast at gmail dot com. Send us an email. Write us a tweet. Write on the Facebook page. Write on this episode's episodes page on our website, thelastrowpodcast dot com. Let me know and let us know if you thought we were unfair to death on <laughs> on the on the villain scale not death from bill and ted who is one of my favorite characters but definitely let us know if we were too hard do you guys enjoy this movie right in and we'll be back in another two weeks on thursday june 23rd with another episode for you guys and uh, if you're enjoying the show please leave us a five-star review on apple Podcasts and spotify we'll see you guys in uh, two weeks we'll see you well so he had a hustler didn't he Oh, yeah. Was he? He pulled that hustler out after looking at a picture of a grieving Allie Larder. Yes. And then he looked at the hustler. And yes. then he looked back at the picture of a grieving Allie Larder. What the hell was that about? Uh, I'll tell you what, if that owl didn't show up to scare him, then, you know, mistakes could have been made. Yeah. Some, some, really, some really sad mistakes. Something else might have been real.